Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to be comparing the new 2012 Retina Display MacBook Pro against the new 2012 MacBook Air. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of different speed tests and benchmark tests, and overall just compare the two laptops. Now first up, let's go ahead and take a look at the Retina Display MacBook Pro and its specifications. Now we have a 2.6 gigahertz Intel Core i7 quad core processor along with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Going to more information, it does reveal that we have an onboard Intel HD Graphics 4000 chip that's integrated and it has 512 megabytes of dedicated graphics memory. And going to system report, it also reveals that we have a standalone NVIDIA GeForce GT 650. 50M graphics processor. All right, now switching over here to the MacBook Air, it does have a 1.8 gigahertz Intel Core i5 dual core processor and four gigabytes of RAM. And going to more info does reveal that we also have an Intel HD graphics 4000 chip. However, instead of having 512 megabytes of dedicated graphics memory, we have 384. Now for the first test, we're just going to be looking at a standard reboot. So I'm just gonna reboot both of the computers and also just know Note that both of these computers are running OSX Mountain Lion and they have all of their startup items disabled. So they're just doing a clean reboot right now. And the MacBook Pro does finish first with a total of 32.5 seconds just as the MacBook Air starts to reboot from that black screen. Now the MacBook Air obviously comes in second with a score of 43.6 seconds. So there's a little bit of a difference there. However, not too noticeable, but what's actually really interesting is that it's completely different and it's the other way around when you actually turn off both computers and then turn them on from being turned off. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Turning off both of the computers, we're just going to go ahead and wait until they go to the black screen and then I'll turn them both back on again. All right, now I just turned on both computers, started the timers here, and you can already see the Apple logo on the MacBook Air just coming up there on the MacBook Pro. And like I said, we do finish first on the MacBook Air with a total of 12.4 seconds and a close second at 15.2 seconds on the Retina Display MacBook Pro. All right, now switching it up, we're gonna take a look at the speed of the flash memory on both of these laptops. Now, let me just say that the MacBook Pro is slightly faster. However, they are comparable and whether or not it's really noticeable in real world applications is debatable. Now, Looking at the MacBook Pro speed, we do have a write speed of 399.5 megabytes per second and a read speed of 441.8 megabytes per second. Switching over to the MacBook Air, we do have a write speed of 374.2 megabytes per second and a read speed of 443.2 megabytes per second. So slightly different, faster on the Retina Display MacBook Pro, not really noticeably faster though. Now we're switching over to Nova Bench. This is just a generic benchmark test and we're going to start it at the exact same time on both laptops and just let it run through. And I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up here and then we'll just go over the results. All right, now the Retina MacBook Pro finished slightly ahead of the MacBook Air. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the total score. Now we have a RAM score of 224, a CPU score of 813, a graphics test score of 150, with the capability of being able to display 452 3D frames per second and a total hardware score of 65. And what you'll notice after I go over the test scores of the MacBook Air is that Nova Bench says we're actually getting a lower write speed than what our other read and write tests reveal. Now over here on the MacBook Air, it says we have a system RAM score of 132, a CPU score of 393, a graphics test score of 45 with the capability of being able to process 105 3D frames per second, and a hardware score of 54. So as I mentioned, this shows a slower write speed than the previous test we just went over. All right, now in conclusion, the Retina Display MacBook Pro is definitely superior compared to the MacBook Air. However, when when really looking at it, you have to kind of take into consideration what your needs are for computing. This MacBook Pro will definitely get the job done. Additionally, if you need it for video or picture editing, then the MacBook Pro is superior. However, the MacBook Air is really a great device. It's more of a post PC than an actual full-fledged laptop, such as the Retina Display MacBook Pro. It's kind of in the netbook category. And even with the new MacBook Pro slim down profile, it's much sleeker and lighter than the MacBook Pro. So if you just need it for 
for browsing the web and typing emails, I definitely recommend the MacBook Air, especially because it is considerably cheaper than the MacBook Pro. All right, don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be updated every time I release new videos. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.